Hey guys, what's going on? It's Brandon from Power Metal Point. Uh, I just got something really cool in the mail. It's probably the last guitar amp I will ever need to buy. Uh, the Rev Generator 100. I was able to get it through uh, Glenn Fricker's special discount code uh, through a promotion he had running a couple weeks ago. Um, so I took uh, him up on the opportunity to pick one up. He is going to actually do a review on this uh, at some point in the next couple of weeks. So for now, let's crack open the box and see what we've got here. Okay, so I've just cut the box open. Let's take a look. So there she is, all nicely packed in. Loads of foam and crap everywhere, which is always good because this came a long way from Winnipeg all the way to Windsor. Okay, and here we go. This is the moment of truth with the amp. So what ended up happening was uh, Glenn ended up lending me his Rev Generator 120 for the last couple of weeks while he shot his PV5150 bias demo with my 5150 against his. Um, he ended up falling in love with my 5150. I fell in love with his generator and I said, you know what, I've got to get one of my own. So I ended up grabbing one. Uh, so let's check this out right here. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, that is a heavy, heavy, heavy guitar amp. Let's change shots here. Okay, so all the plastic is off it. Let's uh, let's take a look. Oh, we've got the back right here. This lovely Rev logo. All the foot switch inputs. And actually bias it right on the amp instead of having to do a custom one like a 5150. So that right there is the back. Let's take a look at the front with the really cool custom logo. And here it is. Here's the front of the amp. So the biggest difference between this one and the 120 is that the 120 has four channels. This one only has two, but honestly it has the two channels that I like the best, the clean channel and the red channel. It just sounds absolutely fantastic for metal tone. There's the custom final stage Phoenix engraving right there. Looks absolutely killer. Um, yeah, just check out all the knobs and everything. It's it's very much very similar to the uh, the 120, and we're gonna check it out right now and hear how the sucker sounds. Um, there's nothing else in the box. There's just the plastic and uh, all the foamies. So I'm assuming all the other stuff will be in the foot switch, which I'm gonna open that box right now. Okay, and here is the foot switch that it came with. I'm really excited for this. Uh, when I borrowed Glenn's amp, he didn't have the foot switch, and supposedly that saves all your settings. Uh, from when you were last using the amp, so every time I would boot up the 120, you'd have to start from scratch uh, and get back to the channel that you were using. wasn't wasn't a huge hassle, you know. It takes five seconds to flick the switch and everything, get it back to where you were. But still, it'd be nice to have something saved. So there's the box right there, and let's see what we've got inside. Let's see, so we got a whole bunch of packing paper here. Let's take a look here. A bunch of guitar picks and stickers and promo crap. Sweet. I always love that. Stick them out of my guitar case. Here we've got, I'm guessing, is the foot switch cable. Um, oh, that's kind of interesting. Let's see if my camera will focus on that. that uh, that's a network cable with an XLR end. At least it looks like a network cable. I think that's what that is. That's, uh, that's really, really sweet. Very, very high quality. Um, and let's see, this must be the foot switch. Oh, this actually looks like a t-shirt right here. Let's take a look. Cool. Can't wait to wear that around. That's actually a pretty cool looking t-shirt. And here we go. This is the uh, the foot switch. Wow, that is a beefy, beefy thing. It's not too heavy, but that, uh, that feels very, very well made for a foot switch. So let's see. Uh, yeah, where's the, oh, there's the input right there. Is there anything else on it? Nope. But uh, yeah, there we go. So channel one, channel two, the effect switch and master and mute. Oh, that's very, very cool. <coughs> so that right there actually might take the place of a uh, having a gate on your amp, which is amazing. I actually love that idea. Um, so I'm guessing when you hit channel two a couple times, that should probably change the color and the different uh, aggression levels that you can get. So that's a very, very cool... Um, very very cool foot switch and actually what's kind of interesting is Glenn when he lent me his 120 he didn't give me the foot switch and supposedly that saves whatever setting you were at last on your amp 
Uh, that'd be my one minor, minor gripe against the 120, at least the way I used it, was the setting that you were last at, it doesn't keep, so you have to start back at the clean channel and then get your aggression and all the rest of it. Your knobs are still in the same place, um, and it's, it's just a very minor thing. It takes a few seconds to get back to where you were, but that's really my only complaint, uh, is that the foot switch seems to save all of the where you last were at with your amp. Okay, so uh, let's try this sucker out. Okay, so for this amp test, we're going to be uh, pretty much 666ing all of the uh, the settings on here, the presence, bass, all the rest of it, uh, other than the volume, which should be backed off quite a bit. Uh, we're running this into a Marshall 1960 lead with Celestian 75s, or no, sorry, this one has a Celestian 30s. This was actually uh, Glenn's cabinet that we used in our first couple records. He ended up picking up a Mesa and an Engel and decided he didn't want it anymore and I said, ooh, I would be happy to take that. It's just a great sounding cabinet. Very, very dark sound because of the Celestian 30s. Um, I've always loved the sound of those speakers. And we're going into a trusty SM57 and we'll be running all that through my trusty LTD H1000. So let's play a couple riffs and see how this sucker sounds. <laughs> Alright guys, that's all for this video. Thanks so much for watching, uh, and stay tuned for Glenn's much more in-depth review of this amp, which should be coming out in a couple weeks.